Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, we got the man with the plan, the one, the only, the owner and operator of the Impact Lounge, the man who will kick you out if you are really drunk, but not drunk enough. BQ, say what's up to the people. So I'm like a, I'm like an Uber. I'm a, I'm a Lyft driver now. That's yes, what that, we've you need. It you to. need your patrons to have just the right amount of debauchery okay like not not like throw up on your shoes drunk but anything above that kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of environment we want right here at the impact lounge and if you are that type of person get ready uh buckle up for some fun conversation we're about to get into it here but before we get started please just take a second go ahead hit that like button hit that thumbs up so everybody knows that you like this video Hit that subscribe button if this is your first time here so that you are subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. All right, BQ, what's uh, what's going on in your world this week? What's on your mind? What you want to talk about? Well, we're going to talk Under Siege. I know Under Siege happened several days ago. It feels like these podcasts, we start recording them like later and later in the week. We keep we keep having like the intention, yo, man, we got to start doing this earlier, but it seems like we just keep pushing it further and further and further but uh so i didn't tell you the real reason i didn't want to record last night i got these veneers done on my front and um when you get veneers you have to wear fake teeth for like two weeks oh. and i cracked mine <laughs> oh. like they, they're, they're telling me like you can't eat with your the front teeth i'm like okay so i'm, I'm eating with the back my back teeth eating soft foods all that shit okay. and then on mother's day um, I told my old lady, what, whatever you want, I'll order it, you know? So we got, yeah. uh, food from this local Mexican restaurant and I was starving, man. I pick up this taco. It was a soft taco and I just bit into it. Boom. Oh. And like, I broke off my teeth and I swallowed oh. them. Oh, so, yeah. So no. I just had this one like real goofy tooth oh. and, um, I had to work the last two days with oh my it. God. So every time I talked to someone, I put my hand in front of my face. Right. <laughs> so like, dude, I cannot podcast looking like. No, you could have done. You could have. You could just take the mic. You could take the mic because you got the um. What do you call that? The the ball, the sphere. What what? Yeah. What do you call the microphone? The snowball. Right. Put that joint right in front of your face. I remember when I right. shaved my mustache. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, the mic like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could have wore a COVID mask, something like that. Uh, we out in these streets. So. Yeah, man. The, we uh we keep doing these later and later in the week. Someone asked me a question the other day on Twitter and they were like, out of, you know, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what they said, but just kind of like out of curiosity, how do you find the strength to like continue to, to do this and to, to podcast and uh, to be a personality when there's so many people who are always, Oh, you know, don't listen to him and Oh, he's negative and he's this and that. And like people like hating on me and shit. Like, first of all, dude, I barely check my freaking Twitter mentions, which mm people have probably figured out by now but when you're when you're saying all that crap to me you're you're talking to nobody you're just like you're just typing you know what i mean um and when i told them it's kind of like the conversation you and i just had offline before we started mm -hmm. like there's a group of people who can't differentiate um constructive yeah. criticism or right. from like uh, an attack from bashing right from bashing from oh this company sucks it's you know they they Nobody watches it. It's bullshit. Right. It's these, they don't got nobody They're, You know what I mean? There's a big difference between what we do and listening to how Jim Cornette talks about the company. Right. You right, know what I mean? Right. And mm -hmm. I said, those people aren't my target audience. And then they never have been, you know, my target audience has always been the ones who can, who can criticize and not just like everything we do. Cause I always say that about like our right. sports teams. We don't like, you know, we get pissed at our sports teams. We get when they play like crap, you know what I mean? Right. And that's kind of how, like, have you doing this with wrestling and everything. And, but I've always said those people who, uh, who like everything, that's not my target audience. They never have been, you, you know what I mean? Um, so I think the majority of my audience understands like, Hey, this comes from a really constructive place. It's not shitting for the sake. Like, dude, if I didn't like the company and I didn't give a shit, I just wanted to shit. I, I wouldn't be doing all this. 
Exactly. Like, no. why, why would you do, like, I, that's the thing I don't, like, do you think we get out of, out, out of, like, yo, we are grown ass men, both of us with families and lives. Like, do you think that we are miserable enough to take time out of our day and, and link up, okay, to just to talk shit about Impact Wrestling, like, right. on, dog. Like, 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 it just, it doesn't make sense. Your theories don't make sense, people. They don't make sense. Like, it, it just, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, and from the, from the beginning, dude, every time I'm like, hey, this, this looks like shit, this sounds like shit, this is shit. If I say that something like that about something, I always have a solution. That's something I, I learned in the military. When when we used to go to like a superior and like, oh, this and this and this, they always say, what's the solution? That was always, always the answer. Like, don't come to me if you're just coming to complain. Like, what's what would you do different? You know what I mean? And right. I, that's how I try to approach it. Like, I don't just sit here and this sucked and this sucked. And this. Like, if I, if I think something sucks and I'm going to say if it, if it does, I'm always going to say, well, I would have liked to see this or they could have done this or something like that. You know what I mean? So, yep, yep. Right, because that that's constructive, right? right? That is constructive. But like, again, you know, I, I don't know, you know, small minded people think small minded. And we're trying to raise your level here, people. Okay, we're trying to raise your level. We are trying to, to, to put you on to what we do, which is watching wrestling like a grown up. Okay, not like a, a teenager with a poster on his wall, like Impact Wrestling is my favorite thing in the world. I love it so much. Oh my God. I, I just, everything is great. Come on, Scott Demore. You're, you're my hero. Like, no, dude, like we're grown ups. We're grown ups. We can talk about the business side of it and we can ask why is the business doing well or why is it not doing well? We can just watch the product. Sure. We can just watch the product. We can, but again, I'm a grown up. I'm a grown up. Right. So like, like most grown ups, we have jobs and, 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 and the places that employ us are, you know, they need to be doing well so they can continue to pay us. That's the way the world works when you're a grown up, right? Like if you're working for somebody and you need them to pay you, you need them to stay in business so they can keep paying you. Right. That's the way, that's the way that works. So you have to pay attention to the business, whatever business you work for, even if you work for Burger King, right? If you work for Burger King, you sure as hell better know if there's a bad damn uh, shipment of meat in your region, right? If you're like, people are going to be getting poisoned at my damn Burger King, that's probably going to affect your job, okay? It's important to understand businesses, right? I'm not doing, we're not trying to take you to damn business school, get you an MBA, but we're just saying, right? Like, we like this wrestling product. We think this wrestling product is good. Look at these other wrestling products. We think this wrestling product is better than some wrestling, some other wrestling products. How come they don't have as many fans in the audience? How come the show doesn't look as crispy and polished as the other ones do? How come it doesn't sound as crispy and polished as some of the other ones do? Why is that? What are the reasons for that? Is that just because the internet is mean? Is that just because Dave Meltzer doesn't like Impact Wrestling? No, it's not. It's not. And again, when you're a grown up, you can look at like causes and effects, things that make sense, right? Like, I, am I saying anything that's like off the wall here, BQ? No, definitely no, not. No, right? Like this is, this, is, this is normal stuff. Again, if you work at Burger King and people stop coming to your Burger King and you also notice that the sign that all the Burger King signage is off the front of the building, right? So people really wouldn't know it's a Burger King if they're driving by. Then you might wonder, is that a reason why people, why, 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 why people aren't really coming into this Burger King anymore? Right? Like, I mean, like there's, there's reasons for everything, right? Like, so, you know, again, like we're just, we're, we're being grownups. We're looking at wrestling. We're watching the wrestling. We're enjoying the wrestling. We're talking about the storylines, right? Like we're talking about the storylines, the things we like and the things we don't. And then there's the other parts of it, right? Like, ultimately where we've been i would say probably over the last few two years or so we've been saying yo impact has a really good product the stories are fun the wrestling is good like why aren't more people into this show and so those are the things that we look at and we talk about and there are reasons for them there's valid reasons for them and that actually kind of leads me to something else we were talking about offline 
we're going to start bringing in more people to help help everyone understand so we can have these conversations. If I tell you something like, you know, uh, I, I had a tweet from the Talking About Pod account where I, I said something to the effect of, you know, uh, impact can be doing. Oh, okay. Here we go. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let, 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 let's get into this. This is how we can kind of get started a little bit. So there was a completely unfounded and unsubstantiated rumor that somebody put out uh, a couple of days ago that suggested that Scott Demore might be looking uh, I'm sorry, the impact might be that Anthem might be looking to replace Scott Demore. <laughs> And um, and then I saw someone else who 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 said, uh, yeah, it would be Scott Demore's choice, not you know, not not Anthem's choice. And when I saw that, I was like, you know, I don't know if there's any truth to this or not, but I could t- it, in the event that Scott Demore was frustrated with Impact Wrestling, I could probably understand why, right? And so that and so. So we kind of, we, we, I kind of, I kind of talked about that a little bit, right? I, I, I said, um, Scott Demore has already proven that he can do a good job with impact as a product. And just like we just said, you know, for probably, I would say the last two years, at least we could probably say, uh, impact has had a very good, a very good product. And why aren't more people watching it? And The reason, you know, the reasons are because in my opinion, at least because they don't, they don't market the product as well as they could. Right. And if you're Scott Demore and you're here making something out of nothing, showing that you can put on a good product, you can do cool things, right? Like let's even go back to 2019. The, I'm sorry, was that 2020 when they decided to put the world title on Tessa Blanchard, right? Like, like regardless of, of, of how it played out, the there, that had a chance to be a huge deal. That had a chance to be a huge deal. And I remember I was saying, you know, like impact needs to take some big swings, right? Take some big swings as in do some things that are going to garner attention. Right. So like, again, putting the world title on Tessa Blanchard, first ever female world champion in the history of wrestling business, right? That was a huge thing that went South for a lot of reasons that were beyond their control, but they took a big swing, right? Then, um, you know, during the pandemic happened and then they manifested the working relationship with AEW. They got on board with the Kenny Omega's the best wrestler in the world story, right? All this crossover stuff, all this forbidden door, all of that, right? Like, like impact was really the catalyst for a lot of that, right? Um, uh, uh, I mean, like uh, the br- bringing New Japan back, right? Like New Japan, New Japan was not messing with AEW, right? Because they had beef with the Young Bucks for how they left New Japan, and and it was Impact that started bringing New Japan people and Bullet Club people back into the states. These are big deal stories in the world of wrestling, and if you're Scott Demore nobody can look you in the face and say you haven't done anything for impact on top of all that on top of all that if you're scott demore you have flipped this roster multiple times multiple times when scott demore and don Callis took over impact the roster had a lot of people that were making money and had their one foot and both eyes on wwe Uh and the first thing they did was get rid of all those people and 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 bring in new people and build up new people. They made you think Brian Cage was a world champion, okay? They were like they, they you know they 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 gave uh, John Morrison a feature run. Like I mean, they did this. Uh, Austin Aries um, when Pentagon won the world title, that was a cool deal. Like like if you're Scott Demore, I know it has to irk your nerves with people sitting there. People, people like us, right? Saying, are they really trying to grow? Right? Like that, that, that has to that that probably has to to irk your nerves. Because if you honestly sit back and look back, look at it, they've done a lot. They have done a lot. But here's the thing. Who knows about it? 
Who knows about it? Who outside of the impact bubble knows about any of the stuff that I just talked about? Who outside of the impact bubble talks about any of the stuff that I just talked about? There's a reason they don't do that. It's because you're not telling them. Let me step outside of wrestling for a second and let's talk about something that everybody loves, politics, okay? Every four years, we have national elections here in the United States, okay? The voter turnout for national elections is always way more than for the local and, and, and Congress elections that are held every two years. Why is that? That's because the money that is spent on presidential election campaigns, marketing and advertising these, these candidates and their narratives is so much more than the money that's spent on these local election campaigns. There's people that like the, the, there's people could tell you who is the president and the vice president, but probably can't tell you who their local senator, state senator, and congressmen and representatives are. Why? Because when it's time to run for president, if you look up the money that is spent on that, and again, like I'm not trying to get into a, a politics conversation, I'm saying there's a reason why you know who the players are and what they supposedly stand for during a presidential election cycle. And you don't know that so much when your mayor is up for election, right? Because they don't, because the mayor doesn't spend as much money to advertise, uh, you know, on your TV all the time and in your newspaper and on your internet and everything, right? Now, let's bring it back to wrestling. I bet you a lot of people out there could tell me what the slogan was for WrestleMania this year. It was the most stupendous WrestleMania ever or some shit like that. Why do we know that? Because WWE markets the fuck out of everything they do. They put it on t-shirts. They put it on hats. They put it on babies. They put it on banners on your internet. They put it, uh, they, they put it on their show repetitively. Their advertisers say it over and over and over and over again. They send you email after email because you bought a t-shirt one time five years ago and they're still blowing you up with emails about whatever it is they're doing. That's called, hey, 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 Brian, uh, what do you call that? Is there a word for that type of thing? It Marketing. doesn't start. Yo. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> marketing it's called marketing okay so like so and and honestly like it's a good thing we're actually getting this out of the way right now because this is going to be this this we don't have to come back to this when we reference it in other stuff that we're going to talk about like impacts digital strategy is the shit okay like bq has mentioned so many times like, what does Impact do digitally that we know about? The only thing we know that they do is wait for somebody who used to wrestle in Impact to do something of note in AEW or WWE and then put up videos of when that person was in Impact. And it, it, it does not work. I had someone say the other day, well, you know, that could get someone to subscribe. Like, it, it's like me going on a dating website and posting pictures of myself from 10 years ago, talking about what I used to do 10 years ago, and then trying to sell whoever, I, I just pull a dating website as an example, me trying to, se to sell a new potential mate on, oh, this is what I used to do, so like me now because of it. Like that, that just doesn't work. The only way, the only way, and um, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm going back to school for a small business administration, and I've kind of learned it in my, my studies. The only way to grow an audience is to appeal to your target audience. That That is it. There's no, mm. oh, well, if we, if we, as long as we get them to watch, you know, maybe we can turn them into a fan or if we can get them to watch this fucking Brandy Rhodes clip, maybe someone will watch Deanna Perrazzo now. Like it doesn't work. It, 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 like, that's not just like, that's not some opinion of mine. The only way to grow an audience is to appeal to your target uh, your 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 target audience, your target viewer, and to have a vision of who that target viewer is. This person is from this part of the United States, or or 
one of one of these states because they know where their hottest states are. This person is this age. This person is a male. This person is this and this and this. Demographics. That that is the only way to grow an audience to appeal and, to and your target you even, fan base. Do you think the impact knows exactly who that target demo is? Like what that target demo looks like? Do you think they have that information? Does, I would I'm, say. I'm, I'm, I, I would say yes. I think they, because we always talk about how random it is some of these places they're doing shows at, but, and I know we don't always give them credit in a lot of areas. They have to know, okay, you know, Kentucky is one of our highest view, you know, per, per capita, like this one, yeah, one yeah. of our best uh, states for viewership or, or the target demographic is high in this area. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they have to mm -hmm. have that information. So I think that you would think so. You would think so. Yeah. Like I know, like, so for example, right. Like uh, again, like just for, for a frame of reference purposes, right. Like WWE, right. Like th their marketing is so ridiculously specific, right. Like they know, they know, if you, I, I guarantee you, they can pull my name out of a database and they can tell you what I like, what I don't like. You know how I know that? Because I know what they send me targeted information for. Whenever there's an event within a 30 mile radius of wherever I live, the last time I bought something from WWE shop, I get notification, right? 50 mile radius, maybe. Um, I get notification. Um, any wrestlers, like let's let's just say the last thing I bought was a Big E t-shirt. If they're doing anything with Big E on it, I get an email about it, okay? Like, it, like, like the, they know who their audience is and it's specific. And if you and me get an email, it may not have the same stuff on it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Right, so like, so so the equivalent to that would be like, if uh, for, from Impact, right? If everything like the last thing i bought from impact was a chris bay shirt right so uh and let's just say the last thing you bought from impact was uh an alicia shirt right so Which it was right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and so so um so like so they should make sure right like whenever alicia is doing anything right when Alicia's going to be in your area or when you know uh if Alicia did an interview on 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 Sports Illustrated, right? Like that, an advertisement that is coming to you. And don't get me wrong, I understand WWE is the biggest, richest wrestling company. They have more resources than a company like Anthem slash Impact. I get that, I get that, but that doesn't change the fact, right? That's like me saying, uh, if if I go to lift up a car and I can't do it. And then The Rock goes and lifts up the car and it's like, uh, okay, well, he's stronger than me. And then I complain like, yeah, well, he has a personal trainer and he works out so many times a day and he probably takes steroids. Those things are probably true, but don't change the fact that the problem here is that he's stronger than me, right? <laughs> so regardless of the, the factors that are prohibiting impact, from marketing on a level of, let's say, a WWE, right? It doesn't make it wrong when we say that they're not doing as good a job of marketing. You know what I'm saying? And that's not an attack. That's not an attack. That's just, that's just, that's just is what it is. And right? it is a lot of advertising dollars. So I know you guys want to hear us talk about Under Siege. So there's always that joke on, you know, social media or talking to your friends where you're like, yo, how come the internet knows everything I'm doing? You know, I, I look up uh, some freaking assless chaps and all of a sudden I get a Facebook ad for it, you know? So you Facebook too? ads and Google ads are not just, okay, this guy's a wrestling fan who lives in Florida. Let's give him an ad. They, they break down into all these different categories. So they're going to say someone who visited Amazon in the last five days. And there's going to be a, to look up for this product. Um, cause, cause one, a big company will take one ad and make dozens of versions of it. And it'll, and there, there's even, um, some parameters that'll say this person makes this much a year have been on Amazon in the last five days and purchased something. And they're going to get their own targeted ad. And, you know, this person looked up this product, you know what I mean? It, 
segments into so many different it's it's you know like a like a tree or just branches off like it's segments into so many different places so it, it, advertising dollar like it comes down to money of course yeah facebook ads are actually very inexpensive to run um twitter ads instagram very expensive right. but facebook is easy i mean so let me um let me let me ask you a question here i want to um i want to i want to dive into this 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 scott demore thing a little bit so we we, we got on a tangent here we, went, we got on a little bit of tangent and we're going to come back and we're going to get into under siege but like the guts of my argument was this tweet i said demore has shown he can put together a quality product with impact but their digital strategy is the shits and there's things they could do to market better that they just have no interest in it has to be frustrating. So that was just me saying that if I were to hear that Scott Demore is what was was deciding to, you know, relinquish his seat with Impact, it would not shock me because he's actually doing a phenomenal job, but they don't seem to want to spend the money on it. Right? That was my whole that was my whole point there. So what do you think uh uh, about that if you were to hear that scott demore you know wanted to do a little less at impact take a step back let some other people you know take on some of the stress uh would you be shocked about that i i really wouldn't be because the rumor backstage with us not the backstage rumor but the rumor that always circulates within the fans is that people wear multiple multiple hats backstage We've, we've always heard that wearing too many hats can be very, very stressful. Um, you know, in the military, we have what we call an additional duty. So we all have our job and then they're going to give us, Hey, you got to do something else too. Right. And, um, depending how stressful your job is, is going to depend how difficult that extra something is. So like me, when I do my reserve weekends, I'm pretty busy. I'm like a singular person in my position that handles the entire base for what I do. So my like additional duty is I'm just a like uniform monitor. Like people in our unit need new uniform items. Like they come to me, I place the order, blah, blah, blah. Um, but they always say, don't, you can't give someone more than one additional duty because the more you give them, the worse they're going to do at all these other jobs. And the more difficulty they're going to have balancing each of these other jobs. You know, if you're like, hey, you got three things that you got four things like no one can handle that kind of load. Um, I can only imagine if we have the people underneath him who wear the multiple hats like he he has to wear all those hats, too. And he probably does more than we even have a freaking clue about. Uh, but he has done an amazing job. But it has to be frustrating when you're just like, yo, as you said, we turned around this roster. Uh, and he he has done like they they took, oh, Tony Khan's a booker of the year. Like Scott Demore has booked a much better company and show than Tony Khan has. It just comes off because it comes down to money and things of that nature, uh, production quality. It comes off a certain way. So it's magnified and people are like, oh my gosh, you know, what a great product. But Impact really actually does a better job than what AEW is doing. I it's just on such a smaller scale. Doing more with less. Yeah. And it's got to be, it's got to be frustrating. If he was like, yo, I, I, I need a break or I need, I need help or whatever the case, you know, because before it was him and Don and now it's just him. You know, I know there's lower level management underneath them. People think it's just like Scott, you know, at least to my knowledge, there is, you know, but it, it wouldn't shock me if he wasn't stressed out because you're not seeing the results that you deserve to get the, yeah. the results you deserve to see. And I talk about, you know, I, I listen to Cornette just because I like hearing him shit on AEW. I think it's hilarious. And even though I like AEW, um, I, I, as I've said on the podcast before, you guys think I criticize Impact? Like, if I was doing an AEW podcast, you would hear me just <laughs> shit all over that show. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I, I think, it? like, I think, I think that working in television, right? Which I, which I do. For anybody that doesn't know, I, I work in television, and like working in TV is hard. Like, it's there, there's just there's no two ways about it. Like, it's it's hard. Like, there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of things you got to keep track of. And 
and a, a lot of times, unless you're talent, it's a thankless job. You know what I mean? It's a thankless job. And the thanks come around once in a while, right? Like they have award shows, they have like Emmys and, you know, and, and, and that type of stuff. And if you're not getting that recognition, right, then like, it's a little annoying, right? I mean, you still get your paycheck. Don't be wrong. You work for your paycheck, right? But everybody wants to be recognized for the, for, for when you do a good job. But uh, aside from that, what you definitely don't want to do is you don't want to have a lack of resources to do your job, right? Like, if, right. If, if my job is to make graphics, then, you know, like, don't, don't take away my Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, don't give don't give me the knockoff version of it. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I so I'm just saying that like I think that if you're Scott Demore, you've been damn it, they've been they've been uh, they've been like refusing to give you the latest uh iOS <laughs> and and you still been cooking, man. So like I think that like um, you know, for anybody that thinks, you know, that we don't give impact their flowers, like you just don't listen. Um I think Scott Demore's done a phenomenal job, honestly. But I think that, like, again, there's a lot of things that you that you see where it just appears that you know the budget doesn't seem to be there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, and the point I was saying when I when I brought up Cornette was like, if you listen to his show, and anytime Impact comes up, dude, they shit on it like it is the biggest piece of shit in the history of wrestling. You know what I mean? And they don't watch it. They don't have a clue. And it's, it's, it's frustrating because, you know, I've said this several times too, the things that like Cornette and his partner are like, Oh, they don't sell these storylines, this and this, all this flippy shit. There's no, you know, psychology. There's no this and this and this like impact does all those things, but we're just, we don't even give the chance to see that it does exist in wrestling. You know what I mean? Like they do a lot of the the things that um, a wrestling purist would like, mm -hmm. but you, you know. But then you got these like personalities who are just like, oh, I, I'm I'm not that dead. You know, because I I brought it a couple of weeks ago. They said, oh, well, the Briscoes are coming to Impact. I guess we got to watch Impact now. And it's like, oh, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> you know. It, I mean, if you can watch Raw, you can watch freaking Impact. Like I don't. I mean. Right, right. Come on, right, man. right. <laughs> but yeah, they don't get the credit they deserve. And then when someone does give them credit, it's like, whether it's a podcast or a website or whatever, like they, they act like these people are crazy, like they're nut jobs. Right. For, you know. Hell yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move along. Let's move along. Well, yeah. What what else what else do we have on our docket before we get to our under under siege? Uh, we'll, do, we'll we'll just jump into under siege here. Uh, because I, I know people want to want to hear about that. We we talked a long time about other stuff. All right, let's let's, let's don't keep them waiting then. All right, so <clears throat> so Impact Wrestling Under Siege was live from the greater Cincinnati area, and let's see, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. we had Raj Singh, Raj Singh, and Shira versus Heath and Rhino. Um, both teams are willing to do whatever it takes to become one step closer to the Covet Impact World Tag Team title opportunity. Rhino takes Singh off his feet with a running shoulder tackle. Singh distracts the referee, allowing Shira to deliver a right hand to Rhino from the apron. Singh hits a flatliner on Heath for two. Singh and Shira cut off the ring as they begin to wear Heath down. Heath gets his boots up to create separation and make the tag to Rhino. The pace quickens as Rhino goes on the attack. Rhino Gore Singh to score the victory. Heath and Rhino with the victory over Singh and Shira. What do you think about that? Um, I didn't care too much, <laughs> to be honest. Like, it was a pre-show match. So, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, it wasn't something. When they kicked it off with Shira and um, Raj coming down, I was like, Really? You, like, lost, this is... you lost me at Shira. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't like necessarily dislike those guys. Uh, I think they're I think Raj is actually getting pretty entertaining. But mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I don't know, just Heath and Rhino just they're clearly gonna have some kind of program with the belt, you know, for the titles here soon. Right. I don't think anyone wants to see it, but I think they're trying to stay on course. Like at once upon a time they were supposed to win the titles. So like impacts like, yo, we're getting the titles on those guys eventually. And it's just, 
it's not going to work because at the time there was a storyline people were invested in Heath for impact and they got to win the gauntlet for gold or whatever the hell it was. Like there was a story that people actually had some kind of investment in. Right. And I use rich Swan as the example, like rich Swan before getting hurt was on a hot streak, uh, which impact doesn't have too many hot streaks with guys mm-hmm. uh, where, where they just organic. And I mean, just like organically, like, yo, they, they got something here. All of a sudden he's having these great matches gets hurt and impact he comes back and back yo we're, we're putting that title on him you know what i mean and it wasn't the same had he won it with what was going on previously so i feel like that's where they're going here they're just like yo we're getting these titles on heath or rhino one way or another um you, you know what i mean but I, i'm just it didn't do much for me it wasn't a horrible match it was a overall very good show let me get that out of the way first of all these, these monthly specials are always excellent. The crowd had energy. If you guys didn't hear our last Cool Factor podcast talking to my guy, Rick, who's, I'm, I'm going to say, damn near single-handedly, single-handedly responsible for putting those people, that many people in the crowd. Um, you know, he, he deserves a lot of props for that. Uh, he's not going to get the props, but, um, I'm, you know, I'm giving it to him. But I know the, we, we know the role that he played in, in getting a lot of those butts in the seats. It looked good. It sounded good. Um, it was a good show. This particular match was just a tag match to me. It was a BTI match. Right. I don't think it was a good like, hey, we're watching it on YouTube. I'm gonna buy under siege because I'm watching this. But you know, right? Was, yeah, I, I think I think ultimately that's that's kind of what it came down to, right? Is like, you know, they didn't. You know, you gotta make you gotta make a, a show feel special. You know what I mean? You gotta make it feel like something that is worth people's time. You know, I think that's what it comes down to. So. You know, when you do stuff and make it feel like it's, it's worth people's time, I think you got a, a, a lot better shot of of getting people to buy into it. People care about it. And, you know, on a wrestling show, you put so much stuff on a show. You got to make things matter. Right. So people will look back and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that thing happens. I can't wait to see what happens next. You know, and so, like, if you're not giving us that, then why would you honestly expect us to care? So, you know. That's just that's just the, the truth and the matter of it. Yeah. So, all right, there we are with that. Now, let's see what else we had going on on the show. We had something a lot more exciting. We had Laredo Kid <laughs> versus Mike Bailey versus Rich Swan. Buckle up for X Division action between these three high flyers. Bailey delivers a series of kicks to Kid, sending him to the outside. Swan takes out both of his opponents with a senton off the apron to the floor. Bailey hits a twisting suplex on Kid then floats over t- into an ankle lock on Swan. Moments later, Swan hits a step-up kick on Kid for the two count. Kid hits a top rope driver on Swan, sending him crashing into Bailey below. Swan connects with the handspring cutter on Laredo Kid. Bailey almost puts Swan away with a pinpoint kick to the head. Uh, Laredo Kid sw- soars with a springboard splash to Bailey, but Swan breaks the count. With a splash of his own, Swan hits the Phoenix Splash on Laredo Kid to win. Rich Swan defeats Laredo Kid and Mike Bailey. It looks like Rich Swan is being set up as the next challenger for Ace Austin. That's what that's what I gleaned yeah. from this right here. Yeah, they they um they they like to let us know those things. You know what I mean? Like they'll act like it's just subtle conversation, but it's like clear that's the direction they're going. That's a direction you got to go with Rich Swan. Like you can't you know, we talk often about them really doing him a disservice when he was the champion with the Kenny Omega stuff and then how they beat him right after it. And then, you know, should have got a tag team title run. That would have really helped them. They didn't get that. Willie Max gone now. Like you have to do this with Swan. Right. So this match was freaking outstanding. I knew Swan was going to win because it was initially supposed to be Alex Shelley versus Speedball Mike Bailey. Alex Shelley had a, indie show that they let him do Mm. so they made it a triple threat i knew that rich swan was going to beat laredo kid one-on-one so it's just natural that you know you put mike bailey in the match they're still going to have rich swan win the match so uh i knew he was going to win but just really good and there's such a difference between this style of wrestling and what aew does where aew is like you know get my shit in uh multiple canadian destroyers on the show this and this, you know, multiple tope suicidas and 
dives and flips and and the matches are all so similar and when you get an x division match and this was another example like you see shit you haven't seen before you know without it coming across really like like two people dancing mm. you know um like Cor- bringing up Cornette again, he hates the Spanish fly off the top rope right? <laughs> because he's just like, it's clear that the person taking the move is cooperating. They're right. climbing up the rope when they don't have to. And, you know, one, two, three, jump and we flip. And it's, you know what I mean? Impact's X Division style doesn't, it's not like we're dancing. Like everyone, you stand here, you stand here, and we're going to do si do and do this and this shit like AEW does. Right. Some of the stuff to an extent, don't get me wrong, but um, it's very original. And then you don't see it later in the show, which AEW likes to do. Right. You know, you see something one match and then you see it again the next match. And then it <laughs> means right. nothing, you know, multiple people why? bleeding on an episode or something, you know, so. And, 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 and you ask why? Why treat your fans this way? Because fuck them. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dave Chappelle reference from you guys from about 20 years, 20 plus years ago. Oh God, we're young. All right. Um, we had Yo, I was, I was, I, I posted on Facebook today. Uh, I've never felt so old as, as today. I just re- remembered that Netflix used to be ordering movies through the mail. They would oh, mail them to you, you watch them, and then you mail them back when you're done. Like that was the that. original Netflix, you know? <laughs> like, fuck i'm old so oh boy I, I remember it was like this this new revolutionary thing uh, the yeah. first version of netflix i tried was there was like a netflix for video games right same right, right same concept like you would they would send you a game you'd play it for a couple of weeks and then you send it back i was like oh my god that's the greatest thing ever <laughs> and that's what started putting like blockbuster and shit out of business yep yep yeah and and if you had a chance to go to if you had the option of going to the video store these days would you I used to love going as a kid, man. I don't know. It was a fun Probably. activity, wasn't it? Like, yeah. Through, trying to sneak back into the porn section. Yes. Dude. <laughs> I remember I turned 18 and the first time I went back there, I kind of like slid back there. And I was in there for like half an hour because I was afraid to come out with a movie to rent. So. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, all right. Where are we? Okay. So we had uh, the impact. We had the knockouts world tag team champion, Madison Rain with Tennille Dashwood. Versus G- Giselle Shaw with Alyssa. Uh, Giselle Shaw. Why is that so hard to say? Giselle? Giselle Shaw. It's Alicia, not Alyssa. Uh, uh, Alicia, excuse me. <clears throat> Giselle Shaw vows to steal the spotlight from Madison Rain to kick off under siege. Shaw hits a series of running uppercuts in the corner. Shaw sends her retreating into the outside with an arm drag. Shaw remains in control as she hit a springboard splash. Rain distracts the referee, allowing Dashwood to grab Shaw's arm from the outside. Rain capitalizes and blindsides her to gain control. Rain hits a Northern Lights suplex for two. Rain spikes her opponent headfirst into the mat, but Shaw somehow kicks out before the referee's three count. Dashwood grabs Shaw's leg, but Alicia neutralizes her at ringside. Shaw hits a running knee to pin one half of the knockouts world tag team champions, Giselle Shaw gets the win over Madison rain. What'd you think about this? So I, I enjoyed it. She beat Tennille Dashwood on BTI, I believe. So now she's beat both of the tag team champions. They randomly made her a baby face, randomly gave her Alicia Edwards. I thought they were going to team her and frost up because they did it at the multiverse of matches and it, and it worked. And I thought that's what they were going to do. Maybe that's what they were going to do and something, because we haven't seen Frost on TV in a little bit. So who knows what, what happened? Maybe they just had to put Alicia in that role. Um, and it also seems like they're doing with Alicia the initial gimmick where she was going to be the influence with uh, Tennille, where hmm. she was like a mini version of her hmm. and trying to, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like that's what they're doing with the, Giselle Shaw thing when they're coming down to the ring and they're she looked like she was trying to do the same pose and everything. Okay. So um, yeah. <clears throat> this is like the ultimate gift for me for uh, Giselle Shaw and Alicia to be on the same team. Yeah. Uh, those, those are my <laughs> girls there, so I'm I'm really excited about it. You know, Giselle Shaw has been using this like running knee as a finisher, okay. and I'm always talking about where's the cool finishers in Impact. And when Giselle Shaw got signed, I was like, "Yo, wait till you see Giselle Shaw's finisher," and. I mean, it's as impressive as as freaking uh, 
Lady Shaw's uh, Lady Frost finisher, but she doesn't do it. The the mm. corkscrew big splash off the top rope, like you know, that shit is amazing. I love that. I think like uh, <clears throat> I, I I like the idea that you mentioned before of like putting Lady Frost and uh, Giselle Shaw together as like reluctant partners, right? And then they can, right. you know, find a way to work together and then they can even be like tag champions and they're just, you know, you know, uh, trying to figure out who's better and then eventually you break them up and you can still feud. Actually, I think that's a great idea because like both of them, they're like newish, right, to Impact. And like, you know, the more the more fans get to see them, the more fans get to know them, you know, gain a like or dislike for, for one of the, one of the characters. I think it's a smart idea to keep those two together, but apparently they're doing something else. Yeah. So my gut tells me that was a direction they were going and, and they had a course correct due to whatever reason. So, you know, we'll see. Right, but so, um, So it was time for some mayhem, Steve Macklin versus Chris Saban. So Macklin's out to prove, that he deserves to be the number one contender for the Impact World title by taking on Chris Saban. Macklin was sent in for a ride when Saban hit him with a Hurricane Rana in the early going. Saban attempts a senton, but Macklin catches him in midair and hits a power bomb into the apron. Macklin remains in control with a double underhook backbreaker. Macklin sends Saban crashing into the turnbuckles, then soars with an elbow drop off the ramp to the floor. Saban is caught in the crosshairs as Macklin drives his shoulder into the midsection. Saban counters mayhem for all, then creates separation with the tornado DDT. Saban hits a neck breaker on the floor, followed by a missile drop kick in the ring. Macklin levels him with a clothesline for a very near fall. Macklin rolls up Saban with a hold, uh, with a hold of the ropes, but the referee catches him in the act. Macklin hits a German suplex, but Saban comes right out the back with a strong clothesline comes right out back with a, a strong clothesline Saban hits another tornado DDT followed by the cradle shock to win Chris Saban defeats Steve Macklin what do you think about this why did Chris Saban need this win what, what was it and didn't he pin like Jay White or some shit at the multiverse matches what wasn't it him that pinned him I don't think it was Shelly I think it was Chris Saban yeah um you would think they have some sort of plan for Chris Saban then, right? Because they appeared to be heating up Steve Macklin. They gave him the big win at Rebellion, right? Over two big names. And I thought that would have meant that he's on the way to be the next challenger for Josh Alexander. But I just don't think this is how you build him for a potential <laughs> world championship match, right? He so loses does that mean the plan is changing or is this just some weird booking? I think it's weird booking, man, because they, they get, so, I mean, Giselle Shaw and Alicia Edwards obviously going to ch challenge for the titles. Why? Because they're a, a female tag team. Like there's no, I mean, I guess Giselle did beat them both one-on-one, -on -one, but so maybe that's not the best example in the world, but they're, they have a history of just giving random title shots to people. It's a lot better than it used to be. Um, but it, it's like he gets that big win at the pay-per-view. Then he loses the Ishii. And then he loses this match for no fucking reason. Like there's no, I guess they know better than we do. They, they're the ones sitting in the creative meetings and all that. But from a fan standpoint and trying to get behind somebody as a big heel in the company, it's like, what? why did Saban need to win this match? What was, he's not going to challenge for the title. Like he's not going to, what, what do you got him doing? What's next for Chris Saban? Like, right. And I've never seen a wrestler that they have that they appear in impact like this that appears to start getting hot and then they just cool them off. And then it, for a second you go, oh, they got oh, and then just cool them off again. And then yeah. and, and just just bring it right back down. And I think part of the problem is I tweeted the other day about Honor No More. You know, Honor No More is taking L's and this and this. Someone's like, Well, they can't win every match. And then I start looking at the roster, it's like impact doesn't have any underneath baby faces. Mm. They got a couple guys, a couple heels that you can feed, you know, John Schuyler and, you know, if you got to give him Swinger or Zicky Dice, like you have guys you can feed the baby faces if you got to get them hot. They, they don't have that on, on, the, on the other side. The heels don't have like, oh, you know, outside of Laredo Kid, you know, you don't have someone's like, oh, this guy needs a win, so let's give him this opponent. You know, right. in the knockouts, you, you give him Alicia Edwards when, you need, when someone needs a win. You know what I mean? And 
they just don't have that on the baby faces. You don't have like the fall around. You, they were feeding Willie Mack to people a little bit, but right. so how can Chris say, I mean, Chris Saban, but honor no more. How can uh, Steve Macklin get hot when there's no one that they can get away with just, you know, not enough baby faces. They can get away with just consistently beating, you know? So, um, I mean, you could always bring in like enhancement talents. Like, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that at all. You know what I mean? Like, I think like the, the squash match is not a lost art because look what they're doing with Masha Slamovich. Yeah. And I, I like it. And I feel like I haven't seen her in like a month, but, um, <laughs> but, but they're just bringing her out and letting her kill people. Right. Like somebody who you never heard of, like here's Joe, the policeman. And then yeah, right, Masha Slamovich come out, kill him. Bomb. She's out of here. And like, it's a great plan. It works. And I think you could do it with anybody, right? Like, you know, do that with, 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 you know, Macklin, like just have him just, you know, killing people who are there for $25 or whatever you pay him. Um, why not? Right. Well, that's what they started doing with him when he first came into the company, but you can't have a guy where you're like, I've been never been pinned, never been submitted and then start losing two out of every three matches going forth after that. Like that's what killed EC3 and impact impact. Mm. EC3 went two years without being pinned, submitted gets pinned by Mike Bennett and then starts losing not, you know, every other match, but he started losing a lot after that. Yeah. And they were never able to heat him back up again. Right. And then they try to turn him heel to to recapture that old magic and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then he became like an app, kind of an afterthought on the show instead of what should have been one of the biggest parts of the show. Yeah. Um, And I often talk about the bound for glory where he didn't win the title from Lashley like to me, that was his opportunity uh, to heat him back up again. He lost, and then they were didn't know what to do with him. You can only beat a guy so many times, and then you're just like, "Shit, I don't, I don't know how to get him back, hmm. you know, back to here." Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I think EC3 and Impact like could have worked, but I think that like, l- listen, knowing what we know now about EC3, knowing what we know now about the way things were in impact around that time like again it had to be just a rough work environment yeah like it had to be tough man it had to be tough and then if you are if you're ec3 right you were trying to do the drew galloway the drew mcintyre right you were trying to leave wwe prove yourself go back to wwe make them pay you and make you a big star because you proved you can be a big star outside of wwe that's what your plan was. That's what you're trying to do, you know, and who can blame them? But when you get to this point where impact is just in this really, really, really rough state, right? Like, you know, you 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 get to work. Everything's confused. You're like, yo, uh, we need you to come out here and take 15 matches. Yes, tonight. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, and then you don't know if the check's going to clear. You know what I mean? Like and even if you do know the check's going to clear everything you're reading online is about, you know, this could be the, you know, this could be the shutdown, you know, this person is getting sued or, you know I mean? Like that had to suck, man. And then to be the person who's supposed to be the face of that or one of the faces of that, it, it, just, it had to be rough, man. It had to be a rough. So I, I almost don't blame anybody for not doing that. I mean, listen, as an adult, right. We talked about being a grown up. It's still your job to show up and do your job. You know what I mean? But like, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think EC3 was in a good spot where I I think, you know, he could have been like, he could have been like impact sting. I think he could have been like what, what sting was to WCW. I think EC3 could have been that for impact where you, they could have heated him up multiple times at any time. And because he, he'd be like the company guy, you know, but it just, it wasn't meant to be, you know what I mean? It wasn't meant to be. For multiple reasons. All right. Triple A, Reina de Reina's champion, Taya Valkyrie versus Diana Perrazzo for the Triple A or Triple A, Reina mm-hmm. de Reina's championship. Uh, Taya Valkyrie and Diana Perrazzo settle the score with the Triple A, Reina de Reina's title up for grabs. Perrazzo blindsides Valkyrie before the opening bell to gain the early advantage. Perrazzo targets the elbow of Valkyrie as she stomps on it. Perrazzo wears her down with a series of submissions. Valkyrie breaks free and hits a blue thunder bomb for two. Valkyrie hits a snap German suplex off the ropes, then counters the Queen's Gambit into a double foot stomp. Valkyrie plants her face face first into the canvas, but 
Perazzo kicks out at two. Perazzo returns the favor and then drives Valkyrie into the mat. Perazzo hits the Queen's Gambit, but it's not enough to keep Valkyrie down. The referee stops Perazzo from using the title as a weapon as Valkyrie rolls up, De- rolls up Deanna for three. Taya defeats uh, Deanna to retain the AAA Women's Championship. After the match, Perazzo attacks Valkyrie from behind until Mia Yim makes her shocking impact return. And Yim is about to hit the package pile driver, but Perazzo breaks free and escapes up the ramp. Woo, a lot happened in that segment. What'd you think about the, the women's match? The package pile driver, which Sammy Callahan already uses. We're gonna, it's it's going to be the next uh, uh, finisher rant I'm going to start having every, once Mia Yim starts winning matches. Um, this was okay, man. I, I I really expected a lot more out of it. I expected it to be better. Uh, I I can't get Ty man. I used to love Ty's music. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I loved her theme song. I was excited when she came down, and I already only have like three or four Impact theme songs that I actually like. Um, and now they now she has one that I don't like, and I just I don't have that same like energy for her when she comes down. But this wasn't as good as I thought it would be. It was good. But I really expected, like, these two girls are going to tear the house down. And that just didn't really happen. And now Dion is the one taking L's. Uh, did you see her match on Dynamite? Yes, I did. I thought it was better than people say it was. Mercedes Martinez, my problem was Mercedes Martinez, Mercedes, excuse me, Mercedes has never won a match on AEW television. And I don't know. Obviously, Scott has to have some control over that. Not control, but I mean, it, him and TK have to sit down and be like, yo, this is, you know, we got to protect our girl here. And it's like. So, right. I mean, like, I, I, I don't claim to know the inner workings of those conversations. Right. Right. Um, but. It just feels like there is no effort to protect impact talent uh, at, at at the at the altar of AEW. Um, it seems like, you know, Tony Khan will do, I'm sorry, uh, is Scott Demore will just do nothing to, to say, you know, Hey, let's not kill our guy. You know what I mean? Like, um, again, you let Kenny Omega beat the whole entire roster, not the whole roster, but like everybody who was anybody. Okay. You let Kenny Omega beat uh, everybody who was anybody. Um, and 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 you wouldn't even like to stand firm that he has to drop the championship back to an impact talent, like bro, like I, I just you know and and again, like look at what they did to Rich Swan. I know I've talked about this before, but like, okay, you knew that the plan was for Kenny Omega to get the title off Rich Swan. You didn't have to beat Rich Swan clean in the middle with the one wing angel in that six man tag match. Right, right. You know what I mean. There was two other people in that match who could have taken that pin. And if you didn't want to heat up Miss, if you didn't, if you were planning on heating up Moose, then you didn't have to beat, uh, you could have beat Chris Saban, right? You could, you could have beat Chris Saban. There was no reason for Rich Swan to take that pin on a random ass pay-per-view, dog. You did nothing to protect Rich Swan as champion, knowing that the plan was for him to eat that same one wing angel and lose the title. And never sniff it again. Like, Scott Demore, man, like, like I, I just stand up for your company, bro. Like, I, I just, uh, again, I, I don't know if that's in the realm of being, uh, looking at it, like, from a fanboy perspective. But it just seems like you would protect your asset somewhat. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I just, I, I can't understand that. And this episode of AEW was a perfect example. You sent out. Or you allowed two talents that you feature prominently on your product week after week. Morrissey (laughs) is out there being booked as a monster, mowing through people. And you let him go out there to lose to, you know, Wardlow, who's preparing. I'm pretty sure everybody thinks Wardlow will be a main event guy, you know, one day. But right now he's he's a mid-carder in AEW. And so, like, and so, you know, you, you send out W. Morrissey out there to go out there and just, 
you know, eat a power bomb and 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 lose clean. Like, and and then Deanna Perrazzo, who ran through your roster for two years, and you let her just just go out there and I mean, like, I'm saying let like it's not like Scott Demore had control of the bookie for AEW, but damn it, like again, you had some agree, you had to have some agreement somewhere. I I don't believe that Scott Demore did not give his blessing in some way to you know what I mean like like he could have he could have asked and it, yo and even look at this when they announced Deanna Perrazzo for Dynamite no fanfare no nothing like Tony Khan loves making an announcement more than anything else yeah. Tony Khan will announce anything I, I have a a huge announcement for Dynamite this week uh um my mail came thank you thank you like Tony Khan loves making a damn announcement and Deanna Perrazzo was announced through just a graphic in between matches. Like, I mean, again, like, bro, like, again, if, if you're Scott Demore, what control do you have about that? Pick up the damn phone, dog. I, I don't know. Just be like, yo, dog, listen, we, we've invested a lot in Deanna Perrazzo. We, we've invested a lot of time in her. We've invested a lot of TV time, a lot of capital. Like, you know, like, Pro- help me protect my asset please you know i'd like to continue doing business with you in the future can you just you know not shit on a talent that i'm featuring and like again i just thought they didn't do anything to make her feel special they didn't talk about her special on commentary and um and she was a total professional obviously you know she did her job but i just i, I don't know i to me i came away from that saying <laughs> i think i tweeted this I said, if if AEW and Tony Khan is the forbidden door, Scott Demore and Impact are the forbidden doormat. Because, yeah, <laughs> like, like he just walks all over this dude, man. Like, no, Scott Demore in in the relationship with AEW, he has done just very little to protect the brand from uh, from a perception standpoint. Um, I was banging the drum that Impact benefited from the whole Kenny Omega thing because they got some of their highest pay-per-view buy rates in a long time. And so for, 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 from that perspective, I thought impact did well in that situation, but this ain't that, you know what I mean? This ain't Mm -hmm. that like, there's no, there's no rub coming back to impact. And so, um, so to answer your question, yes, I saw Deanna Peraza on dynamite and, um, and she's bragging about that now. You know what I mean? She's, she's bragging about that. I'm the only knockout to main event AEW Dynamite. And you lose to Mercedes Martinez, who, like, you know, who's a, she's a good wrestler. She is a good wrestler, but she wasn't presented as anything that's, like, too special while she was in Impact. She's not right. presented as anything special on AEW TV. As I said, she has not won on AEW television. YouTube, that's not what I'm referring to. Dynamite, uh, Rampage has not won. So... Right. Um, so it's just like so, 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 in a nutshell, right? Like, what that tells the fans is that anybody on Impact is weaker and lesser than anybody on AEW. Yeah, Isn't and even the, the Good they, Brothers were, you know, getting their ass kicked when they showed up on AEW. So, it, you, you know, one thing I noticed too, they did the video package. Mercedes Martinez has got the AEW sound quality and video quality, and she's talking, and then it goes to Deanna talking and it's the impact audio and video. Totally. And I, I mean, bro, I didn't notice that at all <laughs> night and day. Wow. Um, and it was like Deanna's talking and it's, it's, it's almost like she recorded like with a cell phone. It was that just like stark. Like you could hear the echo while she was talking, you know, it wasn't like nice and soundproof, like Mercedes. I mean, once I saw that, I was like, dude, Deanna's not winning, man. Yeah. They were, I mean, just the quality of that package. And it was very like Mercedes Martinez focused for sure. But uh, when I just heard the difference in the quality, I was like, gosh, she's, she's not winning. Right. <laughs> you know, that's why like, um, you know, Deanna Perrazzo was mentioning a lot that she wanted to wrestle B- Britt Baker, who she says is like her best friend. And I was just like, they're yeah, not going to do I, that I, now. I said the same thing about um, this idea that Tessa Blanchard, you know, I, like at the time I was like, I don't really want to see her go work with charlotte because she's gonna kill her you know what i mean this is you know pre rebellion yeah yeah shit. okay right? or hard to whatever whatever show it was um yeah i was just like man like 
you know, just the idea that you're just going to crush the person that impact is built up, you know, like, like they're nothing. And that's where they are with AEW, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I knew that they were going to go somewhere with Deanna. Like when you have uh, uh, someone like that, who's got all these belts and doing the champ champ challenge and then loses, like you have to immediately come with something. The worst thing they could have done was have Deanna take this loss and then go into the next match, you know? So the fact that Mia Yim came down, letting us know, letting us know, Hey, Deanna has got a hot feud coming up that we're going to have interest in. Um, it's she's so Mia Yim's around for six months, six month contract could get extended. Uh, you know, once upon a time, she was supposed to be the, the future top knockout. She was supposed to take the place of Gail Kim. That's how they were grooming her. Um, you know, back then, like they were, she kept teasing the 450 splash. Like it was clear that they're like, Hey, we're going to have you hit this at a big moment at some point, but then her contract was up. Um, and she even said in podcasts, I, I knew when her contract was up, she was gone because in podcasts, interviews, she made it clear she wanted to wrestle for NXT. And when she be- she became free agent at the time that the initial May Young Classic got uh, it rumored. And when that happened, every female within, you know, that could be a free agent made sure they were a free agent for that. And that was another thing she had said in an interview, like, I would love to do that tournament, you know, while she's under impact contract. Um, so she went and did what she wanted to do. I would be shocked if she didn't have her sights set on AEW. So hopefully she sticks around. Hopefully this is like, I, there's one, two, I can guarantee she's going to be knockout champion within six months here. Like I, mm. yeah, almost I, mean, I, I think it was, you know, looking up after this segment, I was like, man, impact might have another chance at this, but like, you know, we all remember how excited I was when I thought we we're going to get Deanna Perrazzo versus Kylie Ray. And I, I thought that the prospects of impact having uh, a roster that just included women who we know could do some bangers had great potential. And if you look up, if you look around impact might be back there again, Mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you got Jordan grace, you got Deanna Perrazzo, you got me, you got Taya Valkyrie, you got, um, you got, uh, you know, Tasha Stills, Giselle Shaw, lady frost, like, the impact has a chance and i think they should not squander this opportunity they got a chance to put some of the best women's wrestling matches in the business on over the next few months and i think they should dive in head first man like don't 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 give me no undead realm no swingers palace don't give me no bullshit man give me some you know do a tournament do whatever you got to do like do do something that feels good and serious where the matches matter and you can let these women have matches that we will remember and be talking about because I think they have the roster to do that. And uh, Impact has always had a reputation um, as, as a company that treated re- women's wrestling on a higher level. And I think with the roster they have at this very moment, they got a chance to, to put on some some stuff that we'll remember for a long time. They've got a lot of knockouts on the roster, dude. You know, we, before, you know, a year ago, we're sitting here like, oh, it's the same damn women fighting all the time. And if you actually, someone made a graphic on Facebook yesterday and had all the knockouts, I was like, holy shit. Like, I didn't realize there were that many, because you didn't even list Chelsea Green, who can go. And then, you know, as far as women on the roster, you, you still have Rosemary Havoc, the influence, like, it's like, man, Tenille, there's a Tenille lot. Dashwood, Tenille Dashwood is a very underrated wrestler. Very underrated wrestler. Like, I, I, I think that, I think that if, 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 if they, you know, I don't know, like, what her motivations are. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if she's, you know, committed to the concept of being like a top wrestler. Um, but she can go. She can go. And like, I just think if you just gave her a shot, you know what I mean? Gave her a shot to see you know, what she looks like as a feature player. Like, I think there's a lot there. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot there. And and again, just another person to add to the list, man. Like, if if I'm Scott Demore, Gail Kim, I'm focusing in on trying to see, like, how can we get the most banger-ass matches out of these knockouts over these next, like, like, I'll say it like this. 
they can shift the perception of what the impact knockouts division is because like perception is reality to a lot of people. Right. And even though AEW has Serena Deeb, who I love, I love her too, dude. I love Serena Deeb. Like she's an ass kicker, but she also has like this, like, um, this like kind of, uh, wise older woman that'll be like, Hey, come cut my grass. (laughs) Right. <laughs> my grass for a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but anyway, I I I I I love Serena Deeb. Um, they got Serena Deeb, Thunder Rosa, um, you know, you throw Britt Baker in that mix, and um and and like, but the perception is that AEW doesn't have a good women's roster. Um, and I think it's because you know they don't make a lot of these women's matches feel like they matter. You know, um, and I think that Impact has a chance with the women's roster they have right now that they can shift the perception of, you know, of 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 where you can go to have great women's matches. And you still we still didn't even mention Jordan Grace too. So I mean, it's they got a roster, man. Yeah, they really do. <clears throat> All right, so we had. X Division champion Ace Austin versus Trey Miguel for the X Division championship. Trey Miguel receives his rematch for the X Division title as he battles longtime rival Ace Austin. Miguel attempts a springboard, but Austin brings him to a screeching halt with an arm drag. Austin hits a running crossbody, sending both him and Miguel toppling to the floor. Austin hits a pink, a pinpoint kick to the chin of Miguel. Austin avoids a springboard moonsault then delivers a stomp into the canvas for two. Miguel counters the fold and spikes him headfirst into the mat. Miguel locks in a modified dragon sleeper, but Austin fights out of it. Both men exchange strikes in the middle of the ring. Miguel almost puts him away with a split leg moonsault, but it's not enough. Miguel connects with a neck breaker on the hardest part of the ring. Austin avoids the Meteora, then hits the fold to retain the X Division Championship. So, uh... I, I feel like the way they've been talking about this, this is part of a story that Ace Austin just has Trey Miguel's number. Yeah. And if that's the case, then you would think that Trey Miguel is coming to get a win back at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the point I was going to make too, where I never really, when Trey cut the promo in the beginning saying, I have never beat this guy one-on-one. I was like, wow, man, they just threw a wrinkle to the to this that I, I didn't know, that I didn't realize. So I think they're going to revisit it down the line. Yeah. But um, it, it's really interesting. It's a really, you know, interesting um, uh, fold here. Like, the, I mean, interesting. Um, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but. The, the, yeah. And the match was excellent. Um, Trey Miguel, I don't know where they're going to go with him from here because he didn't have a good X Division title run. He was just a champion. That's all it was. He was like when Trevor Lee was a champion, dude. He's just this dude holding the fucking belt, man. Like, um, they're I don't know what they're gonna do with him. I thought when they were doing the the feud with Ace Austin and, and Mike Bailey, I thought they did, did a disservice to him because they made the entire feud about the other two guys. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he was an afterthought in that in that thing. It was all about is is uh mike bailey or uh it was leading up to the mike bailey ace austin breakup but like why is that your feature story when your x division champion is in this in this match like right and he wasn't i don't even know if he was at the tapings or what but he wasn't wrestling nothing he was just a a complete afterthought and what i thought they could have done so my new um (laughs) a little my new little complaint about impact uh is that it takes too long for them to start the show and I think that this episode, they didn't play We Own the Night in the beginning, so it was better. But <laughs> what happens is they play... So I, I timed AEW's the opening theme song the other day. It's like 30 seconds long. And then within 30 seconds, you know, like Mussolini, like CM Punk's coming out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they start off almost every show with him to hook people in. <laughs> Impact right. plays We Own the Night, which is a minute and a half long. And then they do... Re, this recap package that's another minute to two minutes which is in my opinion unnecessary i don't think they have to recap the previous show you can break it up and if it's relevant later in the show throw it in there but there was it was a podcast i did by myself i started running running numbers and 
it took eight and a half minutes for the first match to start. They did a backstage segment with Josh and Scott. They did We Own the Night. They, we did, they did uh, clips from last week. Eight and a half minutes to start the fucking show. And I don't know if you working in television, if this is kind of like the same for you. I know in youth, in the world of YouTube, they say you've got 30 seconds or whatever it is to hook the person or they're going to watch a different video or just like watching TV or they're going to turn the channel. You have to hook them almost immediately. Um, I know from making music um, and in hip hop, usually before the guy starts rapping, or at least the way it used to be, it was always about 17 to 18 seconds before the verse would start, right. uh, average. But after that 17 to 18, like if, this, if you didn't get some kind of vocals going, people were going to, okay, next song. You know what I mean? So I think Impact wastes a lot of time on the show with, this opening segment. Uh, and you know, like on AEW, when they're like, you know, next week, got a Dr. Brick Baker goes one on one with Thunder Rosa, you know, and they just real, real quick go through like six matches. And then it'll get to Impact's part, and they're like, what's going to happen next week when the Good Brothers cash in their obligatory, obligatory, I can't remember that word, rematch? I mean, it's this long fuck, everything's so long. Right. And um, these are precious minutes on the show. And I'm, I'm, where I'm going with this is that in this whole Ace Austin and Speedball Mike Bailey thing, where it's like they're the only story, how can you keep Trey Miguel revel- relevant? He could have a 30 second fucking video package, him talking, or like even something um, showing him training for the match. Mm-hmm. You, you know, yeah. something to where he's just coming across as, you know, these two guys playing patty cake over here like i'm here training um for this match and just something to come across like he is preparing for the match and cutting some kind of promo on these dudes you know but instead it's like we're there's a good five minutes wasted on the impact show of um clips and highlights and running down the match cards and taking entirely too long to do them right um so I'm going to, this is something I'm going to continue to point out actually as the weeks go, hmm. because I, I do think they're wasting precious moments that they could do something like Trey Miguel, yeah. some kind of video package. You know what I mean? Rather yeah, than. I mean, so I think TV is a little different in that respect. Like, you know, setting stuff up is like a good idea. So for example, like, let's say that, um, let's say, let's say that the Clippers just traded for Donovan Mitchell, right? Like one of the best players in the NBA. And let's say you put on Sports Center, and that's all you want to hear about right now is this new hope for the Clippers. Um, but let's say we're they're not going to get to it until the C block. Well, they're going to keep teasing that hey, this Donovan Mitchell story is coming up. You know what I mean? Like they're going to keep so in TV, you do have to like you got to set things up. Plus, like you know, uh, I read um, I read up on like you know writing writing stories for uh for television you usually have like your a story your b story and your c story and you have to you know there's like an opening act like a middle act and like a closing act right and you you know you have to you know structure it with you know you got to set it up you know get, get into the middle of it and then you have like however it's going to close for the show and so like there's structure to doing tv like it all you know it, it, it it's very important but like retention is huge right so you do have to put things uh, in the show in a way that's going to entice the viewer to keep watching and, you know, not turn the channel. So, uh, you know, getting right to the match, I think it's strong if you have something great, like in the 90s, right? Like you could just cold open the show with a luchador match. And it was like, uh, yes, please. Right. Because I never seen, you know, I never seen nobody uh, do the stuff psychosis was doing. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but it's just, that's just, that's rarely the case these days. So, you know, all right. So up next, we had honor no more Eddie Edwards, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, Kenny King, and Vincent with Maria Canellis. What's up, Maria? Uh, versus the bullet club, Jay white, Chris Bay, ELP and the good brothers. I was really excited to see ELP. I'm a big fan of El Phantasma. I think he's just like, he's like a nut job. Um, but I think he's a really fun and exciting wrestler. So, uh, and yeah, I haven't seen him in Impact in forever. So I thought it was cool to see uh, El Phantasmo out here. 
All right, so prepare for war as two of the biggest factions in professional wrestling today collide in a five-on-five -five showdown. The match immediately turns into chaos as a huge brawl erupts in and out of the ring. King hits Phantasma with a big spine buster. Vincent goes for sliced bread out of, uh, but Phantasma counters and makes the tag to Bay. The pace quickens as Bay takes him off his feet with a moonsault drop kick. Uh, White squares off with Taven. As the two exchange a flurry of blows, Bullet Club takes turns raking the back of Taven. This is actually one of my favorite spots of the match. It's really funny. Like they, they do these really like long, exaggerated back rakes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, with gloves on. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like ELP, you like, you know, roll backwards and roll forward and get everybody crazy and go back rake. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, and it, it, each, each person in the group, had like some really crazy exaggerated way to do a back break on Matt Taven. I thought that was really funny. All right. So Gallows takes out both Edwards and King with a double clothesline. Vincent puts Phantasmo, hits Phantasmo with a flat liner for two. Taven turns Bay inside out with a twisting neck breaker, followed by just the tip to White. Moments later, another brawl breaks out as Chaos reigns supreme. Back in the ring, Bennett and Taven hit the Proton Pack on Anderson to score the huge victory. So Honor No More defeats the Bullet Club. What did you think about this? This was better than I expected. Um, usually you say five on five, like, oh, my God, what, what is this? Um, it's this weird, like, heel versus heel thing, but the, good, but the Bullet Club is, like, cool heels, so they kind of be baby faces. I wasn't expecting Honor No More to win, but I'm glad they did because it, had they lost this match, like just stick a fork in them at this point. So at least now it's like, okay, they got a little momentum. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I was watching the match and thinking, man, like Matt Taven, I wish I was watching Ring of Honor when he was the champion where people were just like, oh, he's this not believable champion or whatever it was because I see him out there and he just looks good like he he he'll kick someone and it looks like hits it, he's hurting him it looks you know you know what i mean like it looks like it's like he's got some real power behind it um i wasn't expecting these guys to win i really really wasn't no. and i'm still very disappointed in how they've treated eddie edwards since becoming a heel because now he's just another person on the roster mm. um and what i've said in the past was like they should have been doing something with Eddie where it's like, what's Eddie Edwards going to do this week? Like we, we, we should be tuning in wanting to know how the heel Eddie Edwards was going to progress. And he's not that much different than the Eddie before. Like it's the same kind of stupid haircut, uh, the same t-shirts that he was wearing as a baby face. It's the same jacket, you know, the color schemes are a little bit different, but there's so, you know, it's the same entrance where you, you know, uh, thank God they changed his theme song, but you know, it's the same throwing a punch with an entrance. Like it's, he's, there's not enough different for me, you know, but um, I was glad it honor no more one who knows what the hell they're doing with these guys after this though. Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting because like, you know, I felt like both of these groups were going to be like featured. Like I, I felt like both of these groups were going to be like put, above and beyond everyone else so to have them going against each other i thought was weird because i thought again i thought these two groups would just be running through the roster just beating everybody so to have them going through each other i think is is a little bit weird it just makes me curious as to what they're actually going to do with these groups um going forward once upon a time there was the shield and the wyatt family and they were both on completely different courses doing the same shit, dominating people. And one day they just crossed paths. And I remember like it was yesterday. They were both jumping the same baby face team. And all of a sudden the three of them, three on one side, three on another, just turned around and had a stare down. They didn't say nothing. And the people just, this is awesome. And they, it just organically turned into something where these guys had a feud. And people really wanted to see it. Right. I mean, if we granted impact doesn't have the, the roster size, but I mean, if 
you could keep Bullet Club hot, you can keep Honor No More hot, and then just organically bring these dudes together, then, you know, I think this would have been, like, really, really cool. But, again, they don't have the underneath baby faces that take losses. So, you know, neither team was hot, really. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, like, um, you know, 100%. Like, they just don't, you know, I, you said it perfectly. Like, it's tough to keep them hot because they don't have, like, people to beat up on. So, right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we had the Knockouts World Champion Tasha Steels versus Havoc in a Knockouts World Championship match. Uh, I don't need to go through all the stuff here. Um, Tasha Steels hits a springboard bulldog, and Havoc wouldn't stay down. Steels connect with the Blackout to retain the Knockouts World title. Tasha Steels getting the win over Havoc. Any thoughts on this? This was better than Tasha Steels versus Rosemary. And you you brought up the Undoubted Realm thing earlier. So the last episode of Impact was on. My son, he's nine, but he's very into creepy videos and movies. Like he likes, to an extent, horror. He likes to be scared. He watches some shit on YouTube. I'm just like, dude, what are you watching? You know, like, I don't even want to watch it. Yeah. So he's really into that kind of stuff. He walks into the room I'm watching and the, and the, the segment, the backstage segment with Havoc and all this with Tasha Steeles and all this shit is going on. And he's watching attentively because it catches his eye because he likes this kind of shit. Granted, he's only nine. I ask him, was that creepy or cheesy? And he immediately was just like, cheesy. Mm. You know what I mean? So that stuff, even I don't know who the audience is for that stuff is what I'm saying because even my nine-year-old son who again, he's nine, but he watches creepy shit. Sees that and he's just like, to him, like, what is this? You know? Right. So um there the only undead realm thing that I thought was good was when Madison Rain was challenging Sue Young for the title and she they actually made it so it was like scary. You know, it was it, it didn't come off corny at all. Mm. Um but this stuff is bad, dude. It's real, real bad. <laughs> but uh, Decay doesn't, they beat nobody, man. Nobody. Exactly. I mean, there's not one one wrestler in that stable that gets wins. So we knew Tasha was going to win. This was a big win for her because she didn't have Tasha Steele. I mean, uh, Savannah Evans to help her. You know, she took a couple L's after winning the title. So this was, uh, she needed this one. Right. And what worries me is that Tasha Steele's title defenses are all, um, we just need to feed you someone so you can win. It's not like yeah. if Mickey James, they're not Mickey actually James, building the character. Right. Right. Like if Mickey James was the champion, they're not just going to Mickey James going to take on havoc at the fucking right. show. You know what I mean? Like they're going to put her in meaningful feuds. They're not doing that for Tasha right now. They're just giving yeah. her opponents randomly. So um, I, she's going to lose the title at slam first. I'm pretty sure. For sure. But um, All right. So, Here's the match that I thought was probably one of the biggest of the night. Impact World Tag Team Champions, Violent by Design, with Joe Doring versus the Briscoes for the Impact World Tag Team titles. Let's see. The Briscoes look to add Impact World Tag Team Championship to their long list of accolades, but in order to do so, they'll need to go through Violent by Design. The Briscoes bring the fight to VBD before the opening bell. Doring goes face-to-face with the Briscoes, allowing... Young and Diener to attack them from behind. The match is underway as Mark launches himself over the top rope, taking out Young on the floor. Jay is next to fly as he collides with Diener. Violent by design turns the tide as they wear the Briscoes down. Mark picks Diener off the top and slams him into the mat. Young spikes Mark with a Death Valley driver uh, for a near fall of his own. Mark also almost puts Young away from uh, away following a top rope elbow drop. Young bites Jay. I said that right. Young (laughs) bites Jay. Then connects with his own signature elbow drop. The Briscoes hit the Doomsday device on Diener to win the match and become the new Impact World Tag Team Championship. uh, World Tag Team Champions. I thought this was huge because the crowd reacted great to the Briscoes. Mm -hmm. They... What I, the, what I took away from it, even though they were just in Ring of Honor, they felt like huge stars. You know, like, yep. 
they felt way bigger than violent by design. Um, they felt way bigger than like how the good brothers feel when they come out, you know, like they're way above all these other teams. I think at Slammiversary, they're going to do a uh, three way of, of them, the bullet club and um, uh, uh, probably OGK, maybe mm-hmm. even a four team. They might throw the motor city machine guns in there. Uh, because I why would, just give us a good tag team match. Why, right, right, right. That? They, they, they cannot help themselves. You know what I mean? Like, right. I just think having a meaningful feud with the Motor City Machine Guns and then moving on to this other, you know, like, I just, I don't know. It's, it's just so fucking weird, man. Like, yeah. all the historic mm-hmm. title runs in, in the history of wrestling had just meaningful feud after meaningful feud, and they they managed to win. Like, Deanna Perrazzo, all her feuds have been meaningful. She wasn't, like, wrestling four knockouts at once every single pay-per-view. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it waters and it waters it just waters things down, but I knew they were going to win because that's another thing. Impact cannot help themselves. They can bring in some new people. Like, you, you know, yep. uh, it's like that meme where the cartoon guy, the butterflies in his hand. It's like, is this for me? You know, <laughs> you guys come in, uh, you know, are these titles, are these for me? Right. Yep. You know, the influence, <laughs> uh, you know, Eric Young, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, Perazzo winning on her on her first or second or third match in. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, the Good Brothers, like all the they, they just come in and win the belts, dude. Um, yeah, and that's why fans get frustrated when they let the the Rohits go and the Jake somethings and these guys, where it's like, yo, they're uh, they're here grinding and they're just not getting to that next level because whoever comes in is always above them. Right. Whoever you bring into that division is is you're just always you stay at the bottom of, of the line no matter how much you elevate your character and how much better you you know I mean, we talk about rohit from when he first showed up with the company to what he became but then you bring in anybody to that x division and and he's immediately beneath them because they're like well he came from this company or whatever so i mean same shit but we actually like the briscoes and they're they come across that big star, so it's a good idea for them to be the champions. Right. I'm not saying don't put the belts on them, but it's just they just have a habit, and they have a lot of good tag teams right now, which wasn't the case several months ago. Uh, you know, the Good Brothers held the titles for so long because they had no one to fight. Right, and I'm pretty sure Slam Anniversary it's going to be, uh, you know, a, three, a seven way. Three, yeah, yeah, <laughs> shit like that. All right. <clears throat> So we had former Impact World Champion Moose addressing the crowd in the middle of the ring. Moose says that he's done some terrible things over the last few months, but he doesn't regret his actions because they made him the greatest, the greatest champion Impact Wrestling has ever seen. Um, Moose complains that he only had five days to prepare for his Impact World title match, which he lost to Josh Alexander. The lights go out as Sammy Callahan makes a shocking return and goes face to face with Moose. Callahan attacks him with his signature baseball bat, then lays him out with the Cactus Driver 97. Sammy Callahan back in the house. What did you think about this? So I'm glad Sammy's back, but there, there was no – I'm speaking as a fan here and someone who just watches and enjoys the show. There was no reason to tease his return right. and to do mm-hmm. these video packages. None. None, 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 none. No good reason. This would have hit so much harder if no, like no one had a clue when Sammy Callahan was coming back. Right. It's I not like um, AEW and WWE where the dirt sheets are following all this shit and they you, they have an idea when someone's going to return. They don't have that kind of coverage. So right. Sammy returning uh, could have been completely out of the blue, but for whatever reason they had to do the teases and we all knew he was coming and even though people popped for it, I, I mean, I just don't see why it was necessary. And I, I'm speaking, maybe there's a creative plan. I, no, it's not even a creative thing because that, it doesn't matter what you have creatively. Like, what is, the, what is your thought process behind, like, letting us know he's coming? I just, right. I, I don't get it at all. Um, but, but I'm glad he's back. I mean, I'm okay a little bit, yes. Yeah. You know, I'm, it seemed like yesterday that they, dude had a legit injury, broke his leg, and they show him being 
<laughs> carted it out to We Own the Night, dude. Um, <laughs> a legitimate fucking, oh not God. some like creative storyline. Like this dude breaks his leg and he's just, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You're to the point with your disdain for that song that you take it as like a personal insult. <laughs> it is. That's, that is where I'm at with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we had our main event of the night. Impact World Champion Josh Alexander versus Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, it's Walking Weapon versus Stone Cold Pitbull as Josh Alexander makes his second defense since winning the title just two weeks ago at Rebellion. Alexander delivers a series of chops in the corner. Ishii hits a vertical suplex to gain momentum. Now it's Ishii who chops Alexander as he mixes in a flurry of strikes. Ishii be- uh, begins to target the neck and throat of area of Josh Alexander. Moments later, Alexander hits a big foot followed by a running crossbody to Ishii's back. Alexander hits a trio of German suplexes, but Ishii kicks out at two. Ishii connects with a thunderous belly-to-belly back suplex. Alexander locks in the ankle lock, but Ishii rolls through an ankle lock of his own. Alexander counters the counter and locks in the ankle lock once again, but this time, Ishii rolls through the ropes in order to break the hold. Alexander spins him off his shoulders for a very near fall. Um, Ishii cont- counters with counters the C4 spike into a back body drop, uh, but Alexander comes right back with a German suplex. Ishii hits a delayed vertical suplex. Alexander power bombs knee, but misses the moonsault. Alexander hits a power bomb, followed by a C4 spike to score the victory. Woo! That was a lot. And that's how uh, Under Siege went off the air with Josh Alexander celebrating his win. What did you think of this main event? So I'm going to be 100% honest with everyone. I did not see the main event. I have this weird habit of watching a wrestling show and turning it off before the main event. Okay. Because I rarely care about it. It's, it's, you think it's, the it's weird. going to die? What's, it, what's, the, what's, the... what's that? <laughs> I said, well, do you think Rose going to die? Is that no, you turn off? the the people at the top of the card in most companies are not my favorite wrestlers and um i yeah. have a hard time like I caring and this particular match i know this was like a wet dream for a lot of people but as i've said i i have no interest in the japanese strong style shit like yeah, ishii man. comes down I, I i mean he's a big star to a lot of people he look he he comes down walking to the ring like i do when i slept on my neck wrong that night when I, I'm walking down the the, the hall, wow. uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm not into his matches, and yeah. um, I've already said I don't I'm not as big a Josh Alexander fan as most people seem to be. I recognize the talent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just we can't be a fan of everyone, right? I'm just not a massive guy for Josh Alexander. So I have to watch the match, and I will. I just haven't. Um, yeah, but it seemed like everyone liked it. it. Seemed like it was really good. Yeah, a lot of praise, a lot of praise coming out for this match. Like I said, um, there's people who don't like Impact that I'm hearing talk about this match uh, positively. So if you're Josh Alexander, man, keep doing what you're doing. If you're Impact, find a way to make Josh Alexander exciting. Right, and uh, and and you could have something good on your hands. Oh, all right. So that was Under Siege. Uh, where do you see? Let, let's spin it forward a little bit. Coming out of this, you know. What do you think we can predict for, you know, maybe the next episode of Impact or maybe a little more than that? Let's say a few weeks, a few months down the road. Um, I think, as I said, with the tag belts, I think we're moving towards a let's get all our big names together in a match. Um, I think we're going to move forward to something interesting with Mia Yim and Deanna Perrazzo. When Mia Yim did her entrance and she was, Afterward, like, dude, she is a night and day for being Jade. Right. And um, people can say what they want about the Performance Center and working at NXT, but there's a clear difference with the people who go through that program. Like, Joan, like, Joan is, you know, every time he came through and he's cutting promo, like, you're just, wow, this shit's amazing. This shit's great. Right. You're listening to it and you're, you know, they're clearly trained very, very well. We can mm-hmm. say, you know, you don't have to like the product or whatever, but they're trained very well. Um, and it's clear uh, when they come on impact 
and she had a confidence about her that I've never seen. I've met her once and she couldn't be more shy. Hmm. Um, she almost, she was almost mute. You know, this was, you know, TNA slam anniversary several years ago. Right. I would, I would be willing to bet she's a completely different person in general now. So I think whatever her and Deanna have coming is going to be really good. I hope they don't rush it. They probably will. It'll probably be on this episode. Um, but the slam anniversary builds always fun. I don't yeah. think that there's the same. What free agents are we going to sign this year? I, Thank I just, God, because that that well, I think, has been going to twice too many. Right, and and I mean, last year they had to, I mean, pull some random, you know, oh no, and what the hell's his name? Oh, no way. <laughs> so I said, oh, oh no. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, this <laughs> random ass fucking who's right. Balabas mystery tag team partner. I mean, my right. God, dude. Um. But it's just you're not gonna now that AW exists where they didn't a couple of years ago when AW, when Impact was really doing this, it's just not gonna work, dude. It's you're oh yeah. you're good. I know people don't want to hear this. Impact's always gonna be the second second option to AEW. Like when if someone's a free agent, they're gonna kick the tires on AEW first. Right. And if those tires are flat, uh, they're gonna say, hey, you know, I'll come work for Impact. Right. That's just the way it is. Like, yep. uh, so um, I don't, I, I think they have to be more creative with the stories for this particular slam anniversary. They can't rely on oh, who's going to show up. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what they do with Sammy. I know Moose is hurt or going, getting surgery or something. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work, but. Um, so let's forecast, stuff. let's forecast. What do you think if you had to put money on it today? If you had to put your your mortgage on the line, what's the main event match for Slam Anniversary? If it's a one on one, I'm gonna say it is Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna be one on one. I think I think they will be in the match, uh, but they're gonna pull some rando for for the uh, the third person, right? Like Jay White or some shit like that. But uh, it, they 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 give us a lot of multi man matches for these pay per views, and uh, yeah, I just don't think I, I don't think it's going to go that direction. I'm sure it's going to be a, a triple threat. Yeah. What about you? Um, if I had to forecast the Flam versus main event right now, I'm saying we're going Josh Alexander versus Eddie Edwards. Uh, I think Eddie Edwards wins the gauntlet for the gold this week. And he challenges Josh Alexander. I mean, if you're going, if 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 the theme of of Slam Anniversary is 20 years of impact, then I think you're going to want to put in, you know, two people who are, you know, seen as like faces of the company. And I think with Eddie Edwards, you're definitely going to get that. And um, yeah, I think they should try good, to. Good point. Yeah. So I, I think that could be. And and by the way, like, you know, as a fat guy, I can notice when a fat guy makes a little progress. And Eddie's getting a little bit more slim. So he could be on his way to getting, you know, getting himself back in old school shape. And uh, he's wearing wrestling tights again. Um, like the, those are, those are actually long wrestling trunks. And so, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. I think like, um, you know, again, Josh Alexander is, you know, putting on great matches and um, you just got to keep getting them good dance partners, keep getting them good dance partners and keep making it, you know, look fun for the rest of us. Right, right, right. Um, I, I just worry that they're going to rely on Josh just having good matches with people because the storyline with Moose was a great storyline and we got invested in it and they built up Josh's character. But that's, I don't want to call it lightning in a bottle, but what they had with Moose, they can't match that again. They're, they're right. not going to find that in another feud on the roster. Like, so where do you go from here? Right. Is he just going to be I'm just going to wrestle good matches or are they going to find a way to have them take the next, next step as a character? Right. You know, I I'm leaning towards, they're just going to bring in random people for him to have good matches, mm -hmm. but I hope I'm proved wrong. So gauntlet for the gold, which I think will determine Josh Alexander's uh, future opponent is on Monday. Uh, I'm sorry. On Monday, on Thursday. Um, 
exactly got. We don't, don't even know even, who's in it. Yeah, no, we don't I don't know who's in it. Fucking clue. But I think Impact does a great gauntlet match. Um, I think Impact should, you know, have that use that gauntlet match the same way that WWE uses the Royal Rumble. Like it should be the centerpiece of a pay-per-view, and you know, it should be big news that whenever this person comes out, you know, whether it's you know tonight, tomorrow night, three years from now, um that that you know there's just there's just that element for excitement mm -hmm. you know so so yeah they've they've been looking for their royal rumble man and they've they've had a couple of specialty matches but they just can't uh i thought that triple threat revolver match they did for the x division years ago was excellent uh, do you remember that when they was? I, oh yes, I I did like that, and I haven't seen that again since. I don't know if they if if they got complaints that that was confusion or something, but I like that. I thought it was an interesting match concept. It was different, but it wasn't hard to follow, and they pulled it off excellently. I thought that was really good, and of course we haven't seen it since. <laughs> yeah, and and what happened was Josh Alexander wins and then has a title shot, uh, uh four days later, on TV right. and loses. You know so. Um, the, the weird thing is about these gauntlet winners never win the title. Like Eli Drake has won two of those and he right. never won, uh, the champ. He, well, no, let me, let me think. I think he won two and then didn't win the title, but he won a third one where he did win the title. Mm. But, um, you know, Tyrus won one at one point. He didn't win the belt. Um, there's, there's been a lot of guys in impact who win these matches. Like, when someone wins a Royal Rumble, there's a good chance they're going to be the champion. They don't always win, but right. I think the percentage is like 70% success. It's it's under 50 for Impact winning these these matches. And <laughs> Remember, it's, you always bring up the uh, Eddie Edwards winning the cup, and then he ended up in a five-way. <laughs> right. I mean, get the fuck out of here, dude. Uh, yeah. That he didn't even win, right? Didn't Eric Young win? Because I don't yes, know, Eddie, yes, he won uh, some. No, no, wait, 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 no. I think Eddie ended up winning the title. Eddie ended up winning the title. And oh, yeah, that Eric, wasn't the Eric Young match. Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, and then, wait, or did Eric win? Yeah, I don't no, know, Eric, because it was, there was no Tessa Blanchard, so they had to have, like, they were like, oh, it's a mystery opponent, and then they teased that it was it, Rich the, Swan. The, the, two, the two surprise entrants were Rich Swan and Eric Young. Yeah. But Eddie, Eddie Edwards ended up winning. I was so disappointed because there was oh, and that then was Eric Young won. That's where right. They were teasing all those debuts or whatever, and you know, Rich Swan and Eric Young was the the big surprise in the main event. Yeah, like, <laughs> I know what they were trying to do with the Rich Swan thing, but people were pissed when he came out because they thought he was the the lone surprise. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, man. You got anything else for the people? Nah, man. That'll uh, that'll do it for me. All right, BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here on social media. You check me out at BQ Speaks on Twitter, on the Twitter. And you can find me at TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also tweet my podcast page at Talking About Pod. And you can also follow my uh, YouTube channel uh, at Talking About Pod as soon as you finish watching this video. Matter of fact, you can go right now. Um, listen, Thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes to kick it with us. Um, make sure that you like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Show us that love. But if you really want to help us, the best thing you can do is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. For BQ, I'm TW. Peace.